make some better ones than that after market. Like resin ones. You can probably get those. This is the this through here consists, which I like this. Now this was more like it. This is more organized now. All the fuselage parts are on this here sprue here, and all these parts right here are on the center wing section, and also the landing gears parts. See, you don't have to worry about going over one sprue to another to find one part, and then take one sprue out and find another one, and go to ten sprues to find another one, and it all should be done in one sprue, what makes it easy for us. Thumbs up there, boys. Thumbs up. Okay, we'll turn this on the back side. A lot of detail of a spar right here. This thing's a strong airplane. Very strong. Donald Grumman did a good job on this. There's your bulkhead where your pilot's at. This is front right here. Pilot seat. Everything. Now, this is jet crew marks. See, like me, what I dimension though, inside the seat. Yep. There's four of them right there. He wasn't fooling. Right about here you go. Ejector mark here. One here. One there. And one there. And this part here, I believe, is being seen. I think. No, no, wait a second. I'll maybe look at the wrong perspective. Yeah, it's looking at the wrong way, guys. Is this ejector marks? Or... And the inside, that seat right there. That right there's got to be sanded out, or you use the filler of your choice. It'd be a lot more simple, guys. Just go ahead and sand it out. Be sure to sand this out before you assemble it. You follow up Nigel, he'll show you this. So you need the extra instructions on that. That's the man to see. You can compare this with an assembly, you know where you're going. Okay. The detail is beautiful. My four isn't warped. Nigel said his four was warped, kind of. Cockpit four. This plastic is very, very, very flexible, guys. Almost like vinyl-like plastic. But it's good plastic. Very good plastic. I love Airfix plastic. Okay. Let me get another screw here. This through here probably his spars in the wings. Exactly what they are, boys. All spars. This wing, this kit is optional for folding wings or just regular extended wings. And each one of these spars follow that that assembly that, that assembly process. Either you have the extended wings version or you can have the wings that are folded. Here's your gun bays right here. The ammunition belts. Here's your, your outer spars or your inner and outer wing panels. Thing is beautiful. Magnifico. Boy, I tell you, Airfix must have got a plan from Government Aircraft Company and just made a duplicate copy of it and just made it out of plastic. Man. It's incredible this thing is. The finesse of detail is amazing. This is amazing. You know, when I was a child of building models and I was very young fellas. I've always dreamt of having models like this. Now that comes the truth. Like they say, good things come to those that wait. <laughs> well said, Frankie Day, well said. Okay boys, we've got another screw going on here. Okay, right here, these sprues are pretty self-explanatory, which you're dealing with. I ain't even looked at the instructions yet. I'm just looking at the sprues. Oh, this way. Okay, yeah, this way. Ah, oh, this is all like 
Okay, boys. It don't take too much to figure this, this, these screws out. These are all your cowix engine engine excess panels. The Hellcat had a Pratt and Whitney double row 2,000 power horse motor, uh, horsepower uh, uh, motor, and with a very I think it was air cooled fuel ejection. When these came out after the Wildcat came to view in earlier in the war. The Japanese have met their match. They say, oh boy, now they got something stronger than a Wildcat. But still, keep in mind, they still kept the Wildcat, but the Wildcat was a very, very well-designed fighter, and it was very fast, like, like, it's, like its successor right here, the Hellcat. Okay, this is the engine mounts right here. It don't take hard to figure that out. These like tubings here probably, probably go to uh, the manifold uh, no, oh, not for your exhaust system. Here's your firewall for your engine. So all these parts right here consist of mostly your engine parts right here. The detail of these things are keys. Man, this thing is... I can say Airfix really did their... Man, unbelievable. Now here's a feature right here, I just noticed. You got Full cowling right here. Got the same cowling right here. It's in half. So that's got to be. That's got to do something with the engine. Displaying the engine. I don't know what that could be. It's like it's a cowling. Where's the other one? Which is not there. Huh? Instructions will clarify this when we get to it. Anyway. These screws here consist of, of all the the the, um, the cockpit inspection panels, service panels, and firewalls, engine mounts. I think we got one more screw left here, just like this. No idea. I got no one to this. How we got one? Let's see. I got two more back to this one here. Right here is not too This here, this for here explains everything. This is your ordinance. You got your rockets, your 500 pound SAPs. This is like a thousand pound bombs right there. Fuel tanks. The fuel tank straps right here. You got the, you got the, the L fit cross here. They give you two types of fuel tanks, fellas. It's optional. All these ordinances on here are optional with depending on what aircraft you want to build to display them on. Here's some more internal parts that go to the cockpit. You've got your control panels here where all your throttle quadrants are at, your switches, switch panels. Everything. Oxygen tank, fuel tank right there. There's your emptiness back after your fuselage where your tailwheel section goes at. So you got your ordnance, ordnance and uh, your, the remainder also of your cockpit parts right here. Fantastic. Man, this thing is beautiful. I'll tell you, fellas, you got to get this. Okay, guys, we got uh, two more screws to go. We'll go to the decals and the instructions and I'll complete the video. This screw here is all your engine parts. Man, this motor is a kid itself, guys, to say the least. Here's all your exhaust stacks right here that goes inside your inner cylinders. On the carriage, on the carriage is pretty strong. I don't think they're probably making metal landing gear for this SAC scale aircraft conversions. They're probably making a, a 
either white metal or a brass set for these right now as I speak. But judging this landing gear and this airplane, I don't think there's no need to buy yourself a metal landing gear set. And you got your propeller right here. This is a large, large ass prop right here. It's big. This is a beautiful airplane, guys. These motors are wonderful. Jeez. Here's your bearing for your prop that goes in. But right your governor ring. Prop was spent, pull it out, pull off your cow wings and everything else. Jeez. We'll get to the instructions to clarify everything right here, guys. Inspecting these sprues. This thing's amazing. Okay, guys. And lastly, the Keller Diller. The last part. These sprues are very simple to, uh, to verify with. You, this is your bottom of your center wing section. This is the top of your wing section. You even got those indicators for your wings right there too. You even got that, yeah, that's what it is. You're folding your wings right here. You got a little tit right there, guys. Well, let's take a look at this. Right there. A little tit sticking up right there. That's your wing indicator. I let you know your wings are locked or, or or closed or extended. I mean the locked or unlocked. Beautiful. Is your flap wells where your flaps are at? Flap wells where the flaps are at. Most stress points on the on the wings. This on the fuselage, which which is very good. Guys, any ejector marks, any pin ejector marks on this kit are not visible, so you don't have to worry about them uh, showing up on the on the on the outer on the finished surface. Man, this thing is a beautiful kit, guys. I kid you not. There's different holes in here we open up by here for different uh, whatever Alderton is going to use. Either your SAP, 1,000 pound bombs, or you use rockets. So there's an option there. Okay. Now, we're going to get to the good stuff right now. First of all, we're going to start with this. Oh, Lord. The instruction book itself, like kid nuts, like a magazine. First of all, we're going to take a look at these decals they give you. subject of this kit right here is you got that uh, your mouth and your eyeballs thing right here your teeth you got the Navy version here and all these stencils will come with all aircraft you got your Royal Navy right here Right here, I think this is New Zealand, I think it is, right here. 
There you have the standard prop logos right there. God darn, this thing is beautiful. Okay, guys, here's the color uh, schedule for this, for this aircraft. This one right here is the X6 Hellcat USS Randolph. That was a baby flat top, 1945. These things are all overall dark blue. The other ones are painted white. Now, with the sea blue they use this, guys, I would not go to the Model Master Dark Sea Blue. There's got to be a special type of sea blue they use on this thing. You got to check your reference chart, your color chart. Now, what Nigel did mention in the last video, there's a company called CPD or, or something like that. They, they got the special paint for this. Now, they got Midnight Blue, which is 15. It's a gloss finish. Uh, so I imagine all these aircraft were painted a midnight blue, not a dark sea blue, a midnight blue. On the back, same thing, the subject of the kit. The USS Princeton. This aircraft flown by Lieutenant Carl A. Brown, Jr. Overall color schedule is midnight blue. That's the humble colors here, fellas. So that midnight blue is number 15, so I'm gonna be picking up some colors in that, but not now, but down the road. Long time to get to that. That's the United States Navy version. Now we got more to come, fellas. Over here, there's another color call out here. Another color schedule. This is the, the Royal Navy, the English, the British. I don't know if this is French or what. And I thought, yeah, it's got to be French. I don't know. 1953. Again, all color schedules are the same as this, exception of the Royal Navy. Operation Sunfish. Number eight, number eight zero eight, Naval Squadron, Naval Air Squadron. Fleet Air Arm, HMS Shadev, Kadev. Excuse me, fellas, I, don't, I cannot pronounce that. Kadev, Kadev. East Indies, March, April, 1945. Okay, the paint schedule list is going to be a little different, fellas. Okay, you got uh, beige green, which is sky in the bottom. And you got matte olive drab on top and with the camo extra dark sea gray is the camo on this that concludes the color schedule so these here are later wild later hellcats and they more or less um we painted overall dark blue with the exception of the Royal Navy. All the drab with a dark sea gray top. And now right here, guys, is the decal placement of this thing. These are the stencils only. Airfix does this all the time now. This is your stencils right here. It tells you all your stencils go at. Back sheets is blank. So, they're all numbered right here. Numerical orders here to find out where they go, where they gone. For a kit like this, you must not leave no stones uncovered. 